I'm not sure what makes a movie jump from three star to five star in the eyes of the public. I saw Oz Perkins' Long Legs a few weeks back, probably the most talked about horror film of 2024 to this point. It has a very fresh 85% on Rotten Tomatoes. Even my favorite cr film critic, Walter Chow, adored it. People online talked about Long Legs' unbelievable twist ending, its unyielding tension, its unparalleled performances. But what I saw was a movie that was fine. Well, we'll talk more about Long Legs on a future episode, I hope, because there's a lot to like. But if Terrifier 2 was a horror film for horror experts, Long Legs is a horror film for horror newcomers. I tell myself all the time not to let outside chatter affect my enjoyment of a movie, lest it taint my ability to receive the movie fairly as a singular personal experience. But that's tough to do because when it feels like the world admires something, you feel immense pressure to like it too. And if you don't, you feel equal pressure to despise that thing. This is backlash, of course. So after Long Legs, I took some time to read deeper into the director's ideas and to explore a few more critics' thoughts. What I found was fascinating. What, what I found was a fascinating, if flawed, film, not unlike 90% of the horror movies we watch for this show. I bring all of this up because this week's film, Pussy Cake, coincided with my reading into Long Legs. It's a similar film, not in style, story, setting, or even essence, but in its perfectly acceptable final product that got somehow elevated by social media. Not to the extent of long legs, but Pussy Cake also had its moment in the social media sun. So much fun, so scary and gross. The most shocking horror film you'll see in 2022. And ultimately, it's fine, it's good. So much to like and not like here, but why did these two movies capture our conversation? Why did they elevate to five stars for so many people? I think it's this. Both movies are high concept. Girl Band fights alternate dimensional zombies. Both have incredible titles that beg to be talked about. Pussy Cake, Long Legs, and both utilize a handful of super creative and memorable horror devices. A true three-star movie to me is not average. It's a combination of one and five star elements, but the elevation to viral chatter needs something a little extra special. Hi, Cecil. Hi, Jeffrey. What's the latest you've ever stayed up, like on a fun night out, not being sick or whatever, but like on a night out with friends? What's the latest you've ever been out? I mean, definitely until dawn. Uh-huh. I feel like there's also been uh, maybe a night in college in which we just stayed up all night and we're like, hey, let's just keep going. And then you get <laughs> breakfast and then somehow you're on a road trip to see a thing or something down the road. So the, the days. Days yeah. and days. <laughs> yeah, you always know when you leave the bar and the birds are singing, then that's a good night out. Mm -hmm. I I do remember in college uh, going out with some friends and getting home like at a reasonable hour for like a, a I think it, we went out on a Saturday night. And but, you know, got home like bars closed in my college town at like midnight or one or something. So we mm -hmm. were home by like one thirty. And when I got home, I saw my upstairs neighbor at the apartment complex. She was just hanging out on her balcony smoking. And uh, and I was like, hey, and then we ended up in a conversation. She was like, why don't you just come up here and hang out? So I just came up and grabbed some beers out of my fridge and we just hung out all night on her patio. And then, oh, it wasn't like a date or anything. We just had a really nice time chatting yeah. and stuff. And uh I just at one point in time, she was like, she was like, I hear the birds. And then we kind of mm -hmm. looked around. We're like, it is daylight. <laughs> Hello, yeah. 7 a.m. on a Sunday yeah. morning. Yeah, sneaks guess, up on you, doesn't it? Yes, we're not making it to church, are we? Oh, no. I still have time to shower and put a suit on. <laughs> uh, so this is, uh, this is Pussy Cake. This is an uh -huh. Argentinian film from two years ago. As I said in my intro, it is... Girl band fights alternate dimensional zombies. That's it. Uh, vomit zombies, zombies. Oh my god! Do you like your zombies vomiting like a fire hose? If so, I have something for you. Ooh, man! So much vomit, so much milky vomit. I immediately liked the zombies in this movie because the it it does feel like a fresh take on zombies. It does. Yeah. I don't think I've seen this style of zombie before. The vomit zombie? No, I don't think I have. I mean, I, I think I've seen zombies vomit before because they're oh, for sure. undead and they can't control all functions of their body. But using the vomit as, what would we say? It's like a form of insemination, right? Like it's essentially- Marinade? marinade? I thought it was like a marinade. <laughs> 
I was trying to figure out after watching this film, I was trying to think through what the rules of the thing are. And I there there's a face hugger type of thing, but not a face hugger. Yeah. It hugs the back of your head, but it looks a little bit it's like a, it's a head hugger. Yeah. It's, it's a, a tramp stamp face hugger. It's a slime hat that uh, crawls slime hat. Up. Yes. And I think that is the creature that is controlling people's minds. Yeah. And then I think it's also planting eggs in them. Uh-huh. And then that creature has to go around and then vomit on people that have eggs in them to create more? Maybe? I, I don't know. See, I thought, I thought the Milky Way, I mean, I was up to you for all of that. Mm -hmm. I thought the Milky White vomit was the Milky White vomit. That nice. <laughs> um, good morning. Was <laughs> something of like a marinade. Like we're going to, you know, like we're going to start breaking down this food that we're going to eat later. Oh, like the like the fly. Like it has to like yeah on its donuts and turn them into yeah. slurry so it can slurp it up. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a good take too. That's really interesting. We don't Not that fully we ever saw rules. that. We never see that. But that no. was, I was like, oh, look, she, she's like tenderizing her meat. <laughs> unbelievable uh <laughs> gross gross so in case you couldn't tell pussy cakes is a super fun gross out movie uh-huh it's incredible it's absolutely incredible uh yeah it's um i was trying also like in terms of like approachability this is a really fun movie for the most part it has a very yeah. it's day scares galore yeah for sure um uh, and uh, it's bright and colorful. It has some really funny moments in it too. Um, but yeah, we, you have to steal yourself for the gloopy gloppiness. Oh yeah. Oh yes. So we open in a beachside town. And lovely, uh, lovely, gorgeous. Somewhere in <laughs> love to vacation there. Somewhere in in Argentina, we've Looks got a, a little sleepy, but you mm -hmm. know, kind of cute suburbia. Yeah. And we've got a hacker, Cecil, a hacker. Oh my god, I tell you. This kid. He's giving me he's giving me like real genius vibes. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, he's got that. And he's also got that, like, he's got the we know he's a hacker because he just types willy-nilly on the computer and then a bunch mm -hmm. of letters appear uh coding. in green on black. Things. Yeah. Yeah. He's and coding he's... the fuck out of something. And he's kind of got a hip, punky haircut. One, one side shaved off or whatever. Yeah. This is uh this is just 21st century Argentinian Corey Haim. Yeah. Corey Feldman, uh -huh. I mean. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So we also see a collection of newspaper articles like up on the wall. And it's saying that like a scientist claims to discover an alternate dimension. Whoa. Whoa. Alternate universe. Uh, a scientist is missing. Still wondering oh. about the missing scientist. Yeah. Uh, mom comes in looking very sad. And we realize that is her husband that is missing. So sad. His son. And that is that is her son. Their son. Missing uh -huh. scientist son. Trying to get in. So Sonny Boy has. Junior has basically learned all of dad's science stuff yes which but a true prodigy yeah which i love that we get in the the sort of the info plot catch up later uh, in the film it's like dear diary good thing dad included copious amounts of notes for all of his science projects so i am <laughs> perfectly able to recreate experiments i was like oh that's really convenient that is so convenient that he left a really good instruction manual mm -hmm. uh, behind for how he did things. That was always the worst thing about when I left a job is having to like write up the, I forget the name of the, you have to create a file. Your that duties. Kind of, yeah. That tells people how do? to do your job. Uh, I was never much into technical writing. Always hated that. Yeah. Anyways, he, uh, mom is like, I'm going to take a bath. You really should try and get some rest. Just, it's been a hard I'm just going to take a bath and cry. Yeah. While mom's bathing, Junior slips downstairs into dad's science laboratory. Uh-huh. This a giant... is a pretty dope laboratory, I got to say. 
crazy elaborate. I mean, it's it's like dusty and piled up like a like a like your garage might be if you do mm -hmm. a lot of work on in the garage. But it's also got um a big machine covered in a red flag, red curtain. It's a yeah, it's like a Coca Cola. Yeah, I think it's a Coca Cola. Blanket? Yeah, flag or banner or something. He hooks his computer into it and turns it on. It's so bright, the lights that come on yeah. that he has to put on shades, Cecil. I know. This this is where I was like, this is definitely giving me real genius. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Very and like flips his little blonde hair, his little surfer boy haircut. We see a f uh, just a glimmer in the hole. It's like a big mm -hmm. ring at the top of this machine, mm -hmm. and we see a glimmer before it turns itself off. We see a glimmer of another universe, like another land. It's like Saturn. Uh-huh. I was like, oh, okay. Wow. I, this is going better than expected. All right. But then uh then it goes crazy and just starts short shorting out. Yeah. Knocks this kid over. He wakes, he comes to and he goes upstairs, and there's just like slimy footprints all over the floor. Uh oh. And dad's there. Cecil, dad came oh. home. Dad, okay, this is where you're like, okay, within the first 10 minutes of this movie, you're like, hey, hey, do you like being covered in bodily fluids of all kinds? Mm -hmm. This movie is for you. <laughs> because dad is like covered. It like, it doesn't look like shit. It's, it's like KY jelly that has been motley colored. And it's kind of got like a true coat on it. You know, it's got like a, yeah. it's like a clear sheen to uh -huh. it. To That's what I'm saying. Like, it's very KY jelly. Yeah, but yeah. Like KY jelly red, KY jelly brown, KY jelly green, KY jelly white. And I love dad the is, mm. I Like, I the dad is, um like, you can tell he's where it's the dad. You know, he's wearing like cut off jean shorts. He's, he's giving me very like extraterrestrial robinson crusoe here yes i love the liquids in this movie in general like they're all mm -hmm. really interesting even like the eggs when we see them later are like clear oh, yeah. with like some kind of like little brown yeah. or, like a yolk in the middle of it yeah everything about it is kind of unique and interesting it has a really cool look on all of the the milky white vomit that's useful but what yeah, so he's like, Dad, 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 you're back, Dad. And he's like cradling Dad because Dad looks in bad shape. Kid does not yeah. know we're dealing with vomit zombies. And then from behind, clump, splat, clump, splat, here comes Mother. And she's in the same condition. Uh-oh. And the last thing, the last beat of the scene is she lurches forward at this kid while simulta simultaneously vomiting all over him. So much vomit, Jeffrey. <laughs> so much vomit. And we haven't even started the movie yet. Title card, Pussy Cake. The, I gotta say, I like this intro. Like, what a fun way to introduce the movie. Uh-huh. I, I was also like, I literally paused five minutes and be like, did I rent the right film? Yeah, same. I was like, I thought, I'd like, I, you know, because you never know. You sometimes hit the wrong button. And I was like... I thought they're supposed to be like, you know, like punk rock music girls. And uh -huh. you know, we're just getting some like weird science. Yeah. I thought nope. we were going to get no, Josie no. and the pussy cakes. And it, yeah. we were Josie not. Josie and the pussy cakes. <laughs> well, we do get to see pussy cake in concert. Yes, we do. Fun, like pop, more pop than pop. I was going to say more pop, pop punk, than punk, but, but yes, yeah, pop. Um, they are pop very rock. like, yeah, pop rock. Uh, they're very like, all these girls are super stylized and, you know, super hot and colorful. And they're they're having a great show in a small club. Yeah. But the crowd seems to fucking dig it. Crowd's into it. Chanting their name. We've got, all right, let's set this up. So our, our kind of our main character is uh, Aya. Uh, L, E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. L, yeah. L. Ellie, uh, she is the uh, she's the lead singer. She's kind yeah. of our main character. Uh, over on drums, we have her girlfriend Sarah. Yes. Uh, and then over on bass, we have uh, this is Sophie, and Sophie is Sophie. the tall, 
just leggy blonde, curly blonde leggy hair. Blonde. Yep. Yep. And in, then in latex chaps. Mm-hmm. Oh, and with she's red got, fringe. She's got fur chaps on for a good chunk of yep. this. Uh huh. And then over on lead guitar, we've got uh, Huli, uh, Juliet. Yeah. And she is blonde raver girl. Yes. Acid head. Streaks of chartreuse in her hair and. Yeah, she's a total acid head. And she's the sweetheart of the group. She's the yes. let's all get along to get along sort of person. Yeah. Uh she's uh she's very baby spice. Very baby spice, yeah. So we have this concert, it's great. Oh, and also we have their manager, Pato. Pato. So Hell of a concert. Pato's like, that was amazing. Let's do some autographs. Doing it. Let's meet yeah. the fans. Let's hawk some merch, whatever. I would absolutely buy a Pussy Cake t-shirt. Oh, for sure. Uh, oh, yeah. I need this right now. And I am for, you know, Cecil, you and I, when we go on the road, we we sell a lot of Night Vale merch because yeah. we've always done that since the inception because we are always people who like to buy a t-shirt of a thing we like. Yeah, And I go to bands and they sell shirts. I go to see other things. They sell shirts. But uh, movies never sell that much merch. And I'm like, I would like a pussy cake t-shirt, you guys. I guess that's true. Yeah. Well, anyways, it's a little awkward. Not a little. A lot awkward. Because there's yeah. a man in the crowd who pushes uh, L uh, too much. Like, he's, like, yeah. trying to kiss her and hug her. Yeah. And I love you. And she has to really push him off of her and and Sarah comes over to like break it up. Yeah, Elle kind of freezes up. Yeah. She kind of freezes up and Sarah who is like definitely definitely the butch the butch mm -hmm. dom in this relationship. She is. She she gets riled up at mm -hmm. this guy. Rightfully so. Totally. Absolutely. But yeah, she's Ella's kind of bemoaning the fact of like I can't I hate it when I do that when I freeze up like that. Yeah. I just don't know what to do in that situation. And you know, Sarah's like, it's cool, it's cool. I will always be here to protect you. Um, oh. what is what is their phrase? My something about my heart. Um, it comes into play later. I can feel I, I can feel your heart beating. I can feel yeah, your heart, beating your heart, heart. Your beating your heart. Beating heart. Oh. Hey, so, love love me some LGBT representation in horror films. Same. Yeah. We've currently got LGBTQ plus on our on our die roll yeah. possibilities, and this one would have fit that perfectly. I'll take an extra. Although, ladies, these ladies do kiss when they are covered. At, later when we get much more zombie vomity, I was like, oh, I need a moist towelette before I'm gonna go in yes. and do any romantics. Yeah. Um, but you know what? Love conquers all. Yeah, there, there's a there, there's a river nearby. Let's just dip in there real quick, wash up, and, and then we can make out. <laughs> yeah. Um Okay, so we learned from Pato they have two gigs on the same night. And yeah. everybody's they're like trying to like Yeah. They're like, man, we're kind of tired, but you know, we need the money. Yes. And Pato is like, my friend Simon wants us to come because he's doing like a like a all night concert, and then there's an after party at the break of dawn, basically that we're gonna yeah. go perform the after party. I'm like, ooh, that is absolutely not the crowd I want at all, even in a perfect yeah. world where no zombie alt dimension vomiters. Listen, those come those, those musicians, they're they're wild. They're wild, man. They are wild. Um. So, yeah, all right, well, fine, we're going to do this shit. Uh, she's like, it's not far down the road. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's do autographs, let's powder our noses, and then we'll get on the road. And, of course, yeah. that means let's do some coke, and let's uh, yeah. have a fat J, and let's uh, yeah. drop another tab of acid. Another they other tab of acid. They ask Huli at one point in time, "What? how many of those have you had? And she's like, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> None of your business. <laughs> I got to say, one of the things that endeared me to this film is the styling. Uh -huh. Like, their clothes are so much fun. Yes. And these are the outfits that they're going to be in for the zombie apocalypse. So keep that in mind. And it's also the set styling is so much fun. Like, the backstage of the club, this rock, this punk rock pussy cake fan is awesome. Mm-hmm. Like, they styled the fuck out of this film. So, like, excellent, excellent work. 
Yeah, it's it's very consistent in its visuals. Like it's so good about the the flashiness. It's just a fun movie. You know, like one of the things about that I noted about my own feelings about the movie Long Legs was is that like on the opposite end, it is a broody, heavy, thoughtful yeah. thriller type of movie, and it really does commit to that. And if that's the thing, you know, once you're accepting that that's what you want. Uh, you can't not really enjoy it, even if the sure. plot is a little like, what's happening? Why? Are, yeah. What's going uh -huh. on? Um, and and I think for the same here, this is just a fun movie. This feels like a, you know, for for our generation, see, so this would have been a movie that would have come on, like on a Saturday afternoon or something on okay on USA or something. You're like, I'll just uh -huh. watch this. This is fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. Much like uh, thinking about a movie like Tremors, you know, like mm -hmm. just a fun, bright. Day scare, enjoyable romp. A little grosser than Tremors, though. I will yes. say that. Yeah. So on the way to the uh to Simone, to Simone's club on the across town, in the van, the pussy cake van, uh L has a nightmare and it's a flashback to a very physically abusive boyfriend. No, it's her no, it's her stepdad. Oh, that's her stepdad. I'm sorry. That's her dad. Yeah, I, I missed the stepdad. connection yeah, of who yeah, that yeah. was. Well, okay, so that was dad. Dad, dad, dad. Yeah. Sorry. I was laying on a bisexuality with an older man. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, uh, that was definitely stepdad. And she's, she's, it looks not only physically abusive, but like sexually abusive. Just, just bad all yes. around. Not good. Yes. Uh, Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty, you know, it's, it's stagey but it's it's very aggressive in, sh in showing the, the the physical attack on her you know and she snaps too and the rest of the band is very much like i'm you know she tells them what the dream was you know and they're like i'm yeah. so sorry you're still coping with that you've gotten so good and just know we are always here for you it's very sweet yeah um and they also comment that you know they also comment too that like sarah is so fierce when it comes to taking care of l yeah Pato is still trying to get a hold of Simone. She cannot reach him at all. And he's not responding to her, to phone calls or anything. Uh, and as they're driving, we see a big flashing light and kind of a popping sound. And they don't know what that is, but we've already seen this from oh, yes. the portal. We know that it is an interdimensional zombie portal being uh -huh. opened. Uh-huh. And the van breaks down. So now we don't have cell phone service. Nope. We are dressed like a pop girl band. Uh-huh. Josie and the Pussy Cakes. Josie and the Pussy Cakes. And we are going to walk <laughs> now to our destination. Um, This highway does look pretty lonely. This road that they're on, it doesn't seem to be any cars in sight. And it is morning when they arrive at the closed it is like down club. full on morning jeffrey yeah it is bright this is not daybreak this is i mean we're talking like noon actually it's like how long were they walking i think she says in the club that it was like a 30 minute drive like it's across town like they're going from where well, she like, said it was like an hour and a half drive. hour and a half okay okay not half an hour and assuming okay. they made it most of the way yeah that's still like a few hours worth of walking in their Josie and the Pussy Cakes little outfits. Yeah. But no one's there. Uh yeah. they're trying to text, but they, they don't have any cell service, nothing at all. And they're kind of noting, like, this looks like a ghost town. Like, what the fuck is going on? Are you sure you had the right day? I was a little confused at this because yes. I was like, wait, why would there be a club? open you know if they're gonna go play that i think you've missed the second gig ladies <laughs> but i was I, like why are they surprised that it's not you know why are they surprised that it's not still like bumping but they kind of explain it they're like oh it was like an after party that is gonna rage like all day yes i think that was it like that they were supposed they were doing like a 24-hour giant music-y thing so it was supposed to still be bopping at least a handful of people yeah, in the morning there'd time. be somebody, but it is closed up. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, Huli is like, uh, you know what? 
gonna pop me a little tab. Anyone want one? And I'm gonna go to the beach. Beach is right I there. I want to go to the beach. <laughs> I I mean, Julie's great. Julie's uh-huh. great. She this scene where she goes to the beach is so funny. It looks it's... like a karaoke music video. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Because it's color splashed and yeah. out of focus. And and she's just like, she's just skipping up the hill, uh-huh. listening to the music in her head. And like, literally at one point, she's like, she's like looking at the foam of the sea, mm-hmm. doing sand angels just because it feels good. Yep. Girl, get it. That trip goes south pretty quickly because she rounds a corner and finds a buried head beach. Uh, She finds just a whole bunch of people buried in sand, only their heads sticking out. This is not what I want to see when I'm on LSD. (laughs) Can you imagine trying to comprehend what the fuck you're looking at? I can't imagine it fully sober, let alone (laughs) how I would react to this. I think maybe if I think maybe if I ran across this on a beach, I would have a brief moment of thinking there was some event I didn't know about. Yeah, it 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 it's very like is is improv everywhere in town? Uh huh. Yep. What's going on? It's it's Beckett everywhere. Improv Beckett everywhere. <laughs> what is the one where she's very sad? Happy in, days. Happy it's days. Happy not in game as the trash cans. garbage cans. Garbage yeah. cans. Yeah. So we see uh some kind of punk zombie looking thing come up from behind her and she screams cut back over to the club pato is kicked in the door it's empty they notice some like clear slime dripping from the ceiling um now wait they're at well they've gone they've gone to simone's oh they're at his house they're not at the club anymore they're at simone's house i'm sorry because because Simone is like, listen, I can't get him on the phone. She's also like trying to negotiate their record deal. Yes. Or there's, there's like, you know, because there's some contention between Pato and Sarah over like the money stuff. Yes. And Pato and Sophie go over to Simone's because like Pato wants answers, which, yeah. hey, makes sense. Mm-hmm. Your cell phone don't work. She knows where he lives. Yeah. Go knock on, go knock on the dude's door. Yeah. So they, uh, they don't see him there so pato like writes a note for simone um but then they hear someone moaning and they go investigate in the other room and pato slips in a giant pool of oogie blood and oh, no lands on her back next to zombie dead zombie body yeah big zombie dude so i think the idea is that when the slime hat grabs your head it controls uh-huh. you yes and then when it leaves your head you're it's dead sort of, you're like you're, done, you're not you're a zombie shell. anymore you're done yeah. now yeah so this is probably somebody who got used by slime hat and then that makes sense left left alone to die okay so now we've got l and sarah mm-hmm and, uh, you know, they're having a relationship conversation. Like, you're not yeah. my mother. I don't need you to protect me. I love you so much, though. Like, I love you. I yes. think you're great. But I've got to do this work for myself. I can't. We're having a stressful it. day. Yeah. But I still love you. And that's when Pato and, and Sophie run up. And we're like, we got to get the fuck out of here. Yeah. And that's when uh, Julie shows up. and <laughs> is all pukey. Yeah. She's well, she's muttering. she's like she she's um she looks like she's just really sick. Yeah, like she is a bit pukey. She's a bit pukey. She's not full zombie mode. She's yeah. still herself, but looking very sick. And she is just muttering the heads, the yeah. heads. Oh dear, no. But then out in the street where we haven't seen much at all in terms of any other people, we see Simone. Simone in the streets. Simone in his, his like blue mohawk, uh huh, skinny black jeans, full full on rocker gear. And Sarah and Pato's like Simone, Simone. And she, Sarah's like, uh, that is not Simone. And uh-huh. He is 
running at them in full uh, fast yeah, zombie yeah, yeah. mode. But the nice before, thing about the zombies please. is that they're very dumb in this movie. Like they're very easily distracted. They have real no ambition in life. No, you know they're really they're like, you know they kind of uh, Simone sees a woman running down the street and he runs after her and then he sort of goes mm -hmm. and then he's kind of done with that and has just sort of wanders about yeah so the the zombies are very very dumb zombies yeah but uh before he can get to them someone in like a red cloak uh maybe yeah. a coca-cola flag what what uh, just t tackles him. Just full linebacker Ray Lewis lays him out flat. Uh, I'm gonna assume that that the red that red cloak is that's our hacker boy from the beginning. Is that what? Who no, is this person? I don't think so. No, Do you remember that kid's the end? dead, huh? Do you remember the end? Yeah. No, I don't know. It's it's like a whole other interdimensional being. Okay, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I, I remember the whole other interdimensional being controlling this red cloak. I just yeah. kind of thought, I mean, I wasn't sure how much time had passed in general, like in this alt dimension. I think if, it's like, oh, I see. If this is just like some predator monster from the other dimension that's come to fight these slime hats. Yes. The Red Cloak is just his own. I thought maybe the little monster controlling the full body of Red Cloak had like taken over. It's just taken over some human form, but it doesn't have to be the boy genius. Oh, maybe. I I thought that as well. I was like, oh, maybe this is boy genius. That's, it's really it just the fact that doesn't that really make sense. It doesn't because he gets zombified pretty quickly. Yeah. It, it only makes sense because he's wearing the red Coca-Cola right flag and because he seems to have invented a lot of things but maybe he didn't okay, invent okay. anything these are just things from his that. home dimension um well anyways he's just red cloak we've got red cloak versus yeah. the slime hats is what we have in this movie so now we're we want to get out of town however we've got a sick friend and you know Sarah's got to be telling this telling Pato like you you got to chill out. You have to be fucking. You're the manager. You have to yeah, be chill. Yeah. I'm the drummer. Yeah. This isn't my job. It's your yeah. job. So, um, you know, Julia's vomiting blood. Uh, yeah. but you know, L and Sophie are like, no, we have to stay with her. We're going to stay with her. And they're like, fine, you stay with her. We're gonna figure out if what's going on. Sarah and Pato go their way. The other two stay back with Julie. This is where we see Simone run down a woman, like a human oh, that's it. woman yeah. in the streets and vomit all over her face. The vomit in this movie is not to belabor the, well, we should belabor the vomit because the movie belabors the vomit. Yes, so it does. It's, it's a yes, big it part of the film. But the one thing I noticed about the vomit that I thought was so impressive is it looks like these actors are actually vomiting. There's a couple I moments know. where it does look like the side thing, but you know, the classic thing where you have a hose hooked to your yeah. palm of your hand and you kind of do the side, yeah. cover your mouth and, bleh, and it rocket yeah, launches yeah. out. There's a lot of rocket launching vomit coming out of these people's mouths from straight on. I don't know. I don't know how, I, I mean, I don't know how they did it. It's movie magic. Movie magic. CGI you know, maybe, is my only thing that I can maybe think Maybe it's of. real, Jeffrey. Maybe they ipecacked the shit out of all these actors. Yeah, I just said. <laughs> Here, drink a thing of, uh, drink a quart of Here, Oatly. Here, drink two gallons of milk. Yep. Here's, Jesus. First, go for a run, a two mile run, uh, and then chug uh -huh. this vitamin D whole mm -hmm. milk. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. Anyways, they confront Simone. Well, they don't really confront Simone. Simone sees them and chases them down. Yeah. And he tackles Sarah. But Pato, to get him off of Sarah, is like, Simone, Simone, uh, look at me. And hey, he comes to hey. her. And uh, she's like, I'm your Pato. Don't you remember me? Yeah. And uh, we get the sense that they had also like a really like a physical yeah. relationship too. 
and he grabs her and just vomits all over her face. She stabs him in the head with a la Titan, stabs him yeah. with a hairpin. With like in, with a pen. Yeah, with like yeah. a writing pen. Oh, it's a like, writing pen. She she that, pulled it out of her hair. So I, yeah, yeah, that's all. Yeah. But before he dies, he just reaches in and opens up her belly and her guts spill everywhere. Oh yeah. It's a lot. Woof. Yeah. A lot of guts. We have lots it's a of, lot lots of, guts. of guts, Cecil. Okay. So Julie has been brought. Okay, so we find a uh so let me reset this. L and Sophie are inside this house and they're outside of this house and they're like, well, we got to get in the house now. So yeah. they kick open the door, bring Julie inside this house. We're going to learn very shortly that this is the house that was in the intro. Oh, what a coinky dink. And um, we can see outside there is red cloak hiding in a tree monitoring all of this. Uh-huh. Interesting, interesting. Uh -huh. Which is why, which is why I can see, and I was having the similar confusion of like, oh, maybe this is the kid has turned interdimensional zombie hunter. Yeah, so I was like, oh, maybe he's like staking out his own house, but I don't know. I think this is like another species altogether that has yeah. come through the portal. I think you're right. I think they he is in some war that has nothing to do with us humans. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, yes, that's it. And he's probably staking out the house, not because he has an emotional attachment to it, because he's the child. He's probably staking out the house because he knows that's where the portal is. Mm -hmm. That's where he came through. So it's kind of the home base. Sarah's like, uh, this is very Jules from Pulp Fiction. Like, we're gonna need shotguns for this shit. Yeah. But all we have are kitchen knives and a fire poker, that sort of thing. The usual house the, home invasion fair, but you know absolutely. what? They make it work. They do sometimes, mostly. Yeah, they explore the house and they find one. They find d Dad's dead body in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. They also find a bunch of the all the newspaper clippings about the affected oh. area and the missing scientist. They even find the boy's journal, being like, "I think I can replicate his experiments." Thank God, Dad left so many notes. This is so weird, Jeffrey. Okay, you're trapped in a zombie apocalypse. Sure. You're you're searching the house that you're in for zombies and for potential weapons. Uh huh. Just for a safety check. I don't think stopping to read somebody's journal is the high on my list of priorities. You know, I agree. Especially like a teenage boy room. Yes. Like, oh, let's see what this 15-year-old had to say in his journal. Oh, he, That's he's, like... he's actually, he's very good at drawing. Mm -hmm. He's got some cool, like, listen, it's a cool-ass journal. And you know me, I love a good, again, this movie, like, the design of this movie, they, like, it, it's got, like, interesting different kinds of writing. And, like, you know, some of the pages have clues that are, like, when, where, meaning, like, when does the portal go to, where does the portal go to, it's got some like mystical kind of, you know, occult sort of elements to it. Well designed. But I don't, I think I'd be like, yeah, this is just a sticky old teenage boy room. Next day, room. Day one of zombie apocalypse is to Sarah's point where the shotguns. Yeah. Day 30 of zombie apocalypse yeah. survival is what can we learn about what's happened? And is there something we can, so that's when you explore the lab and the notebooks and the yeah. things. Yeah. But yeah, we're on day one. We just need shotguns. Well, they make their way into the lab. They don't find shotguns, but they do find a crossbow. Very useful. It is very useful. I did have the question about like, why does have crossbow? Because we live in a beachside not? resort. Like I understand if we're in the mountains and you have a crossbow, maybe you go yeah. deer hunting. Yeah. Uh, but they live in the Argentinian equivalent of like Myrtle Beach. And I'm yeah, wondering, no. we don't have a lot of need for crossbows. Yeah, it's a hobby. Here in Destin, Florida. No, know, we sure right? don't. So uh, let's see here. Let me back up to where I was in my notes. I scrolled ahead too far and I'm going to reset 
So, anyways, they uh God damn it, god damn it, god damn it. Okay. Now I know where we're at. So obviously Sarah has to tell everyone that Pato did not make it. This is where we yeah. gotta get the guns. Yeah. She and Elle are exploring the the basement. Meanwhile, they've left Sophie upstairs with Julie. Sophie kind of gets a little bored and is like, I need yeah. some water. A little thirsty, a little part. She goes in the thirsty. kitchen. I'll take a sandwich. Yeah. Let's drink from the faucet first, but then fridge. Yeah. Opens the fridge. Lots of yeah. fresh lunch meat and a, a big sandwich. thing of milk. Oh, no. Girl, when she... F okay. Please go on, Jeffrey. This had me thinking about... uh blacker than the night when what's her head goes to uh -huh. the goes to make herself a peanut butter jelly sandwich and a tall glass of ice cold milk and yeah. i can't not think about sarah griffin and how she has her she has her inner alarm set to bad wigs and people who just drink milk straight just like straight milk Ugh. Yeah, so she builds a really nice looking, a tall sandwich Lovely. on two slices yeah. of white bread. We got fresh lettuce and ham and right. cheese, yeah. tomatoes, the the works. And she carries it out to Julie. Meanwhile, as all of this is happening, we do see one of the slime hats coming up the side of the sofa that Julie is on. Now, I want to, I, here's the thing though. Okay. This is what, this like, this movie is so gross. Do you know what grossed me out one of the most about this movie? Mm -hmm. Sophie, Sophie's like, here, Julie, take a sip of this milk. And like kind of feeds Julie the milk. And Julie's like, <laughs> you know. And what does Sophie do? She's like, oh, you don't like milk? Well, I like milk. And then drinks from the same glass. That was literally for me like one of the, I was like, uh-uh. No, no. No, 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 no. Absolutely oh, no. not. No. I know it's such a stupid detail. Yeah. But I was like, I don't think I could. I don't think I can handle that. <laughs> no. One, just like, like just seeing someone dribble milk out of their mouth. They're like, oh, poor Julie. This seems I'm just going, so gross. It's just so gross. Out of the same glass as my zombie infected friend. I don't even think I caught that because I was so grossed out just by the notion of her force feeding her milk. Just yeah, I know. Like, just promise me if I'm ever on my deathbed or very sick, Cecil, that you will get Jeffrey. me ice chips. Uh Jeffrey. ask the nurse for more jello. Uh you know, please do not force feed me milk uh ever. Uh, well, anyways, Sarah and L hear something upstairs and they go back upstairs, and what they see is Sophie just standing there. This is not good. This is where, like, you can very clearly tell this movie has a deep, deep love for the Evil Dead. Like, one, the copious amount of vomit. Uh huh. Two, the sort of zom zombie deadites. But it's the this this is the moment where you're like, listen, if you walk into the room, and your friend is just standing stock still. Uh huh staring at the wall and unresponsive they are possessed yes yeah uh they um they approach her and sophie goes full zombie and grabs Elle's oh. throat starts just choking yeah. her out and we can see sophie's face is fully turned so this is interesting to me i mean there, there's a lot of these weird rules here where i'm like one i Going back just to the portal, I'm like, did the portal yeah. allow things into our real world? Or is the portal a place that you go into that looks like our real world, but is alt dimension? That's one question I have. Second sure. question I have is, as addressed earlier, how does the vomiting plus eggs work? Yeah, what is the, li what is the life cycle of the armadillo hat? Yeah. Third question is like, what does the vomit do to a person? Because we didn't, when the woman got run down in the street by yeah. Simone, she just got vomited on and laid there. Later, yeah. the people on the beach who get their mouths vomited into, they just kind of lay there they, or they, yeah. you know, they fight it or whatever. But, it's, and it's apparently, not really acid, it's not acidy. 
Julie it's got not... vomited on too, and she's just turned into kind of like a mopey, like a very sick person. Yeah. Sophie is full violence, and and I guess it's because the slime hat crawled on her. Is that what's happened here? Yeah, I think it's like the slime hat makes you the most active form of zombie maybe okay okay but you know like we've seen so many 28 days later like the whole idea of infection in zombie movies and the idea of like how long is the gestation period so if some if a zombie vomits on you one would think you've become infected and you will then become a zombie yeah because that's usually how zombie movies work it's about you know the like the the infection rate and the gestation rate of the infection is like so short and then you become a zombie and then you infect three more zombies it's the zombie you know the typical zombie pyramid scheme that we're all used to yeah but this seems a little more loosey-goosey which is why i'm going for the meat tenderizer marinade theory (laughs) that it's actually not terrible i mean it's gross and but it won't kill you and maybe it'll just break down the enzymes in your body to yeah later or something yeah yeah, maybe it's like the the spider venom sort of thing where it just like the, the liquefies you over yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Sarah has her so, uh, her knife and she goes fully at Sophie to chop her arm off. Now, I thought this was a good touch. She hacks right into Sophie's arm, but it doesn't like yeah. chop the arm off. You know, this isn't like uh, yeah. from dusk till dawn where like the yeah. vampire things. They're just, just like, explode. yeah, there's limbs flying everywhere. Yeah. Uh, So it just like the knife sticks in her arm and Sophie grabs Sarah. So now they're both being choked. Sarah has a backup knife on her belt. Hell yeah. She takes that cleaver out and just starts wailing on Sophie's this face. This is so intense, Jeffrey. Oh. This is so intense. Like, she is, like, fully just cleavering her friend's face uh-huh. over and over. And, like, you see it. What's weird, though, is that, like, the makeup later doesn't really reflect this. No, it doesn't seem to be doing any. Like, like you need to sharpen that knife. You need to go find yeah. a knife sharpener. Um yeah, I think most kitchen stores have knife sharpeners on staff. Sure. Yeah. Um, YouTube has some great tutorials on how to use a whetstone. So, anyways, but it's Sof- definitely visceral. It's very visceral. Sophie's about to fully vomit on Sarah when Red Cloak busts in, and Sophie goes after him instead. Vomits kind of like all, all over his face, but yeah, he's masked. Good job, yes. Red Cloak. Yeah. I mean, he's like, how to, how to describe Red Cloak? He's got like the little ma- little breather mask, kind of like Bane. Uh-huh. Like if Bane and Predator and Mad Max. Doctor Doom. Doctor sort of... Doom yeah. is a very good one. Yeah. Where yeah. it's like, looks humanoid, but also like when you look at, it doesn't seem human. Right. So he is fighting with Sophie and he is about to finish Sophie off by, I think by chopping her head and killing the thing that is controlling her. And this is where I like, I didn't fully buy any of this, but Sarah sees him about to chop up Sophie zombie Sophie, who we know has turned. Is evil I know you've only been here a few hours, but I think you will have gotten into your head by now that this is yeah. how this works. Like once you're a zombie, forever a zombie. Like that's and no she, longer your friend. She like chops into Red Cloak's leg. Yeah. She like wounds him and he has to like limp out of the room. So I don't really understand why they don't understand why they don't understand. He just saved you. Yeah. And he's trying to kill the thing that is trying to kill you. This is like a big, like this, this is the turning point in the plot where I'm like, where I was kind of like pro pussy cake to like, eh, pussy cake. You know, this is where like, it kind of breaks down because of this disconnect of like, people are like, people are fucking zombies. Like what you gotta, you kind of have to say your goodbyes. Yeah. And leave. Yeah. Would be my you know, get outside of infected area zone. 
rather you know or this this whole thing of like i mean granted if there's monsters coming out of interdimensional portals i don't know what interdimensional space war is happening between you know the slime hats and the red cloaks and Mm -hmm. you know i'll leave i'll leave that for the sci-fi writers out there (laughs) i'm much more on the like i i don't want to fuck with either of them Mm -mm. my friend sophie is clearly not my friend as she just choked out my girlfriend l mm-hmm. and is trying to vomit on everybody i'm like mm-hmm. girl i think you're done i think you're cooked yeah we got we got to go yeah we got it we gotta we gotta get out of suburbia here yeah don't blame me i voted for red coat that's it it's my bumper sticker yeah she uh i i don't i know it's i know it's a tried and true device in horror films that our protagonists make dumb choices Sure. But I, I don't know that it's that it's tried, but I don't know if it's that true. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, it's just it's yeah. it, it's it's a hacky device. And, and I think you can, you know, your characters can get in trouble by either making great decisions, but it, they just sometimes things fail. Sometimes, fuck yeah, up. sometimes yeah. they fail making mistakes that are calculated, but fail yeah. or by having a hubris or a fatal flaw you yeah, know what i mean yeah, yeah. in them like the the classic greek tragedy approach that they make yeah. dumb choices because they themselves we understand that's going to be their bad choice like i think that's i think that's it for this movie though it's like you know we're kind of set up with this idea that it's like pussy cakes one one for all all for one like their bond is so tight yeah that even like they're dragon hooli around even though she is clearly on death's door with zombie virus. Yeah. They're, they're trying, you know, like it's, it's, I think they're trying to play on that sort of like bond. Between, yeah. Between the band. I think you're right. I think it just doesn't do an effective job of setting that up. I just found this decision to attack the yeah. red cloak kind of dumb. Yeah. So, but, but... necessary because we learn mm-hmm. that he has, injectable cure-all medicine yes this is um what movie i've seen this before is this like predator what's the deal with this is this i don't know this feels like a thing i've seen in a movie before where like yeah the mon the the evil alien has like a a healing potion like like legend of zelda you just find a potion and your hearts go back up i mean it doesn't look painless no it actually looks quite painful Uh uh-huh but very effective. Yeah. Yeah, he's just got these kind of like uh metal big metal syringes that he jams into his belly and it heals him from whatever oh. wound. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He Redcoat heals himself and then he grabs Julie and fucks off. Like yeah. climbs out the window and he takes her to a well, park. Oh, go ahead. Well, it's interesting because, you know, he kind of inspects L. Uh-huh leaves her alone that's right she's pretending to be dead yeah yeah sarah's pretending to like be passed out and sarah witnesses all this sarah like he kind of inspects sarah he kind of like sniffs her belly button which i thought was a really weird choice but you know what (laughs) makes sense here in a few minutes leaves her alone but julie he's like you can see him go Uh grabs her is out the door so like again like sarah Fear, my fierce lesbian sister, you're doing the right thing, saving your girlfriend, but also like kind of like pick up the clues of like kind of what's what the bigger picture here is. Like yeah. this is not just a random killing machine. Like there's a method here. Yeah. There is. And she's not attuned to it because she's so protective of her girlfriend and her friends. And I mean, uh, also, this is like day one of the zombie apocalypse. It, it is. It's a lot to I take I think in. I would also be like, what? Yeah. Just kill anything that moves, probably. Yeah, yeah new employee orientation is always overwhelming. Yeah. It's right. So he takes, Red Cloak takes Julie out to a public park, ties her up, like it's very like damsel in distress. Like this is very yeah. close to like tying a woman to a train track in a 1920s yeah. like film. Like to a lamppost. Yeah. And he then takes out his giant space, knife, space, space knife. knife. 
and cuts a hole in her belly and eggs just pour the fuck out of that. Oh, Julie. And Julie is now very conscious to what's happening. She is yeah. he is doing this with her alive. Yeah. And she is screaming and he holds up one of those gooey clear eggs. If you just imagine a hard boiled egg, but instead of the white yolk, it was all clear. It's it's almost like one of those um was it that hundred 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 day eggs? Uh-huh. Yes. You know, that you like bury and then oh. like kind of liquefied. It's a bit like that, but uh -huh. clear. So gross. And um yeah, and then he like crushes the egg. But he's kind of looking around, but he's kind of looking around like like clearly like this is some sort of antagonistic like I've got your eggs. I think Fuck that he's your eggs. I think he's setting up like a, a honeypot, right? Like I think he's yeah. setting up a trap for yeah. the for the for the slime hats, right? Because he's yeah. drawn their eggs out and they want to protect their eggs. Mama Bear That's wants to protect the cub. Yeah. And so he's drawing them out so he can kill them, basically. Yeah. But Elle and Sarah track him down and they fuck it all up because Sarah just shoots him with a crossbow once in the shoulder and then once right through the fucking head. In the head. And man, I know that like international juice that's inter international, interdimensional juice is very effective. But I was like, man, it cures head wounds. Oh, okay. wow. All right. That's great. But which I mean, when we get to the end, kind of makes sense. Yeah. But well, and it makes sense that like this is just some rando human body that yeah that um, human ish yeah yeah because we have the slime hats but then really red cloak is run by chess spider yeah, yeah. so chess spider versus slime hats mm -hmm. and so I guess it it makes sense that like if if the there's a wound to the head, it's not really destroying. Yeah, it doesn't the brain. matter. It's that's not where the brain. There's no brain involved. It, it's yeah. all inside the little like the little slug pulling the pulling yeah the levers. Yeah. So, um, so he has to scamper away. Sarah rushes to Julie, and then this I, actually this is the part where all of the eggs pour out of oh my her god belly. I was like, girl, this is no good. This is not a cute look. And Sarah's... this is also where I'm like a little like Sarah's like trying to get trying to get Julie's the hands untied, and I'm like, you have a knife. Yes, you you have you have a knife. Yes, you 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 you've got you've got a knife. You've got a knife. This but was it's not a horror movie unless there's a zombie just poking around the corner, being all slow and stupid. To kind of, you know, we have to make some 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 of this kind of difficult. Add some tension. I was kind of snickering to myself because when, when she is trying to untie carefully Julie's mm -hmm. whatever the rope is that's wrist holding bindings, her hands. Yeah, yeah, wrist bindings. I was just thinking about as a child at, on Christmas whenever people would open presents because we would kind of yeah. – we would do the – everyone gets one gift and then we kind of go around and each person opens their gift okay. one at a time. But wow. as a kid, you get really impatient and I would watch my mom or my aunt or somebody like carefully untie the bow oh, and then yeah. undo the wrapping very oh, neatly. Yeah. And I'd be like, tear that fucker open. It's my yeah. turn next. Go. Yeah. Go. Great, you got a mug. Awesome. I'm tearing this bitch open now. My <laughs> so, turn. Yes. Yep. You know? A bit there's definitely a bit of that like watching grandma untie the bow at Christmas for yep. sure. Well, as she's doing this, this big zombie dude is approaching. She doesn't see him. She also manages Sarah manages to accidentally step on some of the eggs and crush them open and that's oh. when zombie dude is like oh no i will kill you that's not without my babies <laughs> those are my space babies l <laughs> is clearly not comprehending this crossbow <laughs> oh my god this is this is one of the dumber horror movie tropes in the world which is like not understanding the weapon the, the like fumbly hand weapon uh -huh. You know, like this how is... is this? Like she's like fully seated, and like she can't, like she doesn't. And and Sarah, of course, being like the butch dom in this relationship, she's like boom, boom, locked, loaded, shoots it off twice. L, she, she's she's a soft femme. She is. I 
I don't love the, this is such a, just a simple trope of like, can't load the gun yeah. sort of thing. But here's, and, here's the thing though, Jeffrey, I've never encountered a crossbow in my life. Same. It would take, it would take me quite a while to figure out how to lock it, load it, knock it, whatever. But here's the thing. I think as soon as we have discovered a crossbow, this is, this is the thing. Zombie apocalypse day one. We have like three knives and a crossbow. I want to make sure every motherfucker in my team knows how to use that thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Figure out how you load the gun, how you load the crossbow, how you do the thing. I also think that this moment for me, I think the, the backstory of L to me falls flat in the yeah. sense that she has this PTSD from an abusive stepdad. Yeah which causes her to freeze up in moments of extreme yeah. anxiety, tension, or fear, or yeah. really moments of fear she freezes yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. And here's a moment where she is actively trying to do a thing. She can't do it, but she's actively doing that. And it's only one beat near the end where she'll freeze in a moment mm -hmm. and have a flashback again. I just don't think all of that quite made sense. Like I wanted to see more of yeah. that. If we're gonna use that story that she freezes like a more in fear. Complete character. I yeah. wanted to see that, those beats on her. But we get the trope of can't load the gun. She finally at the last second gets that crossbow loaded, does a very dangerous shot as this I monster know, grabs Jeffrey. Sarah. Because they're like they're like mud wrestling. They're like fully bodies flailing. And L, who has never shot a crossbow in her life, she just sort of takes a takes a shot. Ginner's luck. She sh she shoots her shot. Mm hmm. And she manages and to think get it doesn't the zombie. Go through her girlfriend's yeah, fucking for noggin. For real. Um. So now we we've killed this zombie yes. guy. And then they look over and they see Julie trying to shove all of these eggs back into her open oh, belly. Oh, oh see? that's so sad. And it's like, this is the moment in which, you know, Julie is kind of, I think we all know she is not long for this world. Right. But this is the moment in which, like, you could, if you're in the world of the movie, you're like, oh, my sick friend. Oh, I must take care of my sick friend. She has a fever. You know, that kind of thing of like, but holding out hope she might get better. This is the moment in which it's like, oh, no, I think Julie's gone. Yeah. I think I think Julie's fully an interdimensional uh, in incubator. Yeah. Zombie. I think this is where Sarah and Elle need to just be like, you and I, it's you and we me. love yeah, each other. We're, we're a thing. Let's get out, out of, of town. Yeah. You're out of here. Yeah. So anyway, she uh Julie attacks Sarah and L cannot again get the crossbow loaded. So she just says fuck it and she goes and like swings it at Julie who catches yeah it with her hand and then that's when L freezes. She has the flashback yeah. of stepdad and freezes. We next scene we see is the beach and the shore and the waves lapping and it pans out at it, you know, a wider shot. And we see Sarah buried up to her neck in sand. International interdimensional space zombie Beckett. <laughs> yep. Okay. There's a whole bunch of other people who are also still alive. Yeah. Human people. This is where I was like, man, I think this movie missed a trick. Here. Uh huh. Because this movie, well, this movie was, I mean, listen, low budget, independent horror film, right? Like yeah. you have these like five, like these are your five protagonists. Like, yeah. you know. But I think if I was like Sarah, I'd be like, and saw other, other livings, I'd be like, what the fuck is going on? What? You're alive? Other survivors? Yeah. What? How, where, how did, I mean, not that they would have any answers, but I think at least a like, this is the literally the first time they've encountered anyone else in the last 24 hours. Yeah. I think I would have questions. Yeah. Also, can you not get out of this sand? Oh my God. J Jeffrey Craner. <laughs> I'm like, are your hand are you like weighted? Are you duct tape underneath that sand? Because like I've been buried in sand before. 
children bury each other in sand. And you know what? It's not a it's, what? What? It's not impossible. No, we can do this. Uh, it's not even very hard. Mm-mm. Also, I mean, why why is the zombie again like the the whys and the wares of this? Uh, to me, it's like this is the zombie's larder. Like this, and it's like, oh, we're just gonna bury these heads because we like the heads. And it's we're gonna prep them for egg incubation for egg like when the eggs hatch, then the eggs just kind of like like little like little like little zombie sea turtles yeah just like crawl along the sand and they latch themselves onto somebody's head and then we have more yeah slime this hat is, zombies this is where I get it it gets into your theory that the vomit is the marinade you know yeah. this is where it gets to like spider caught a fly yeah. you know that that. The, the spider, ca- you know, things get caught in the spider web and the spider doesn't just go bite the thing in the web. Yeah. It wraps it up. Yeah, it kind of like eats a the- little bit at a time. Well, yeah, it wraps it up it and then later. it injects the little cocoon that it puts the yeah. fly in or whatever the bug. And then it uses its venom to essentially turn it into like a little yeah. Capri Sun. Yeah, yeah. That's it. and then later it can just go slurp on it. And so I think that's... That seems to be what this is. This seems to be people yeah. for feeding, maybe, yeah. and that yeah. other people or, are for or... incubation. I, sure. I don't but... know. Because Julie is just, like, uh, zombie mama Julie is just all fours, just crawling around. She And she's, like, vomiting on people indiscriminately. She, like, snaps some dude's neck, then what? vomits on him. Yeah, that was the thing that I was wondering about, which is like one dude she just crawls up to and he's a wide awake and she's yeah. just vomiting straight into his open mouth. Like he is, he's like baby bird. Like, yes, mommy. Jeffrey, this is the thing, like so much open mouths. <laughs> so much open mouth. Like, uh, it's so gross. But if this I was is... buried up to my neck in sand and somebody starts vomiting liquid, I think I think like shut my eyes, shut my mouth. Yeah. Um. I mean, listen, I I did a play for the Neo Futures called Biscuits and Wistfulness, where I think uh-huh. you, I think I've had you spit milk straight into my mouth yeah. before Cecil and somebody Christopher Borg. I think that was spat consensual, flour. Jeffrey. It that was, was consensual. Con- well, I think maybe this man on the beach is like, hey, pretty He's lady. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 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 But yeah, but then another dude like is wincing away from her, and so she's just like, "Fuck it," snaps his neck, and then pukes on him. So I'm not sure. And then pukes on him anyway. So maybe I don't, I don't know. This, I'm going with the marinade theory. Yeah. So she's about to go. Uh, how how are we, so? L is also lying on the beach, unconscious. Yeah. Sarah is like calling to her, trying to get her to wake up. Yeah, to be like, wake up. But also. Watch out because she, you know, zombie behind me. Yeah. And Julie's about to go for L, and Sarah is like, hey, no, 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 do me, do me, do me instead. Yeah. She's like, all right. But then Red Cloak appears, fight ensues, gives time for L to free Sarah from the sand. Again, Which didn't need my girlfriend like, to help me out of the sand. I'm I know. good. It's so, and, and, and like, it's one of those things Sarah's like, just run save yourself and else like shut the fuck up and help me get you out of here i'm like it's it's just sand it's just sand you can get out of this it's just sand okay cool so the fight between red cloak and julie is giving them time to escape and then before they get out of there they watch red cloak take his space knife go right into Julie's like, mouth and then shoop, whole head just yeah. goes right on off. And unfortunately, the slime hat just like burrows under the sand. Yeah. These are sneaky. Like I can see why this would be an interdimensional parasite. Yes. Like this is, you know, I can see why like an you know, something that is like an intelligent species is like fuck the these are the worst thing. Like this will go through an entire planet. Yeah. In no time. I didn't understand why Red Cloak at this point cuts the head off rather than just taking his blade and driving it straight down into the slime hat. 
Do you well, know what I mean? Cause, of, yeah. Because like, yeah. just you're just you you're not trying to save. You're clearly not trying to save the girl because no. you just cut her head off. Yeah. Um, you're trying to kill the slime hat, and so would it matter if you killed it while it was on her head, or do you have to kill it? When I guess it's, it's like hard to you know. Yeah, the stabbing straight it, down. Yeah, like you yeah. can't stab it from the back. I don't know. I, it just there's that's a lot of questions about decisions and plot in this movie. So they go on the run. Mm-hmm. And um, but hold on, this <laughs> oh yeah, they're running through the woods. Uh huh. And Sarah trips, yep. and falls forward and impales herself on a tree branch through no, the guts. Jeff- Jeffrey, Jeffrey, that's not how this works. It it's like. And it's like, okay, she falls and trips. And we're like, oh no, this is going to be bad. But then it sort of pants up and she's like on a log with a tree branch, like through her gut. And I was like, you girl, you would have to like take a running, flying leap onto this log. Yeah. And more than likely. Physically make this happen. You would have to have a machine press you into it because yeah. even if you fell off a building it's onto like this log, your, it's like it's like through your kidney. Yeah, I um, mean, I can see like tripping and falling and like, you know, like fucking up your leg. You yeah. know, falling onto some if it was on the ground, but this is a little bit much. It's a lot much, and so they. Um, you know, we're having like, I'm dying, I'm dying. She's like, you're not going to No, I can't move die. you because yeah. you'll bleed out. So you yeah. have to stay here. Stay strong. And Sarah shows her an empty one of those healing yeah. syringes. And it's like, I watched him heal himself with these potions. And Elle's like, BRB. Sa- Sounds say great. Less. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? Is you just, this is like a, you don't even know what kind of creature that is. Yeah. What kind of cellular makeup? What what planet it's from? What the fuck? You're just going to... Enjoy- you're like... Just, I mean... Yeah, give it a shot. But... Uh, sure. Hail Mary. Might as well. Okay. I forgot to mention that when they saw Julie get beheaded, L ran for julie but then thought better of it but did manage to steal the space knife space knife very important yeah so when she goes back to find the red cloak at no point in time to I, and it doesn't seem like the red cloak can speak but no. at no point in time do they try to reason or communicate no. with red cloak it's very like homunculus yeah you know like it's it's like Bleh. and it mm-hmm. kind of like just you know she, she's trying to like tries to swing at it and it just sort of pushes her into the ground yeah like, is you she... are not my prime objective. Yeah, you I have are nothing just to another... do with you. Yeah, like, I can't, I have no time for this. I'm trying to save your planet, not you. Fuck off. Yeah. And she manages to take that super blade and just go right into him, right into his chest. She lands like a full-on chest stab, which is pretty impressive. And he falls... he's wearing armor. Yeah, and he falls backwards, and this is a different type of injury that he is than what we've seen before. We saw him get I... hit in the head with an arrow. Yeah, yeah. We knew he was going to recover. This is the moment Space we were like, juice. he's all oh, good. He's going to die. He's well, what's die. interesting is that every time he's around, there's this like weird little clicking noise. Uh huh. And I think this is this is actually one of my favorite parts of this movie is this reveal. Because you hear that clicking noise and you just kind of realize like, oh, what the fuck am I listening to? And and like the cloak falls to the side and you realize there's like a very small slug spider puppet uh-huh. that has been sitting in the cockpit of this body. Yeah, on the chest, like Iron Man, like just center of the yeah. chest. Yeah. And it's like a tick or a spider. It's got a yeah. bunch of eyes and a little click clack. Yeah. But the, like the, 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 the pincer things. I don't know, a little little slug with slug with talons. Yeah. But it has but it's sitting in machinery, so it's clearly intelligent. Yeah. But 
Elle has managed to like break the glass. She's broke break in case of emergency, like uh-huh. break glass. She has broken the glass, and this thing is like fizzing and bubbling. Yeah, because it's exposed to oxygen or something. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, red cloak, no more, no more. But she does get the serum, and she yep. runs back to Sarah, who is not on impaled anymore oh dear sarah's got a slime hat on now and she is now i have now I, oh, yeah. is, I know this is late in the game jeffrey how many slime hats do you think there were was it just one or many i get the sense there's just, just one. one yeah because we like, never see multiple violent people like we see it yeah. on simone early because that's simone is who attacks uh julie in the first place at the beach yeah yeah and he's attacking people in the street and then after he gets stabbed you know by pato then yeah. that slime hat is just on the loose you know and then yeah. it takes over okay. sophie so i think that's, and that's why it's so one. protective about the eggs because it is only one and it like wants to make more okay but it's and, like you know in in movies like night of the creeps or like slither there's always many one. yes and this one it is just one slime hat I think it's just one. I, I, listen, if they wanted to make a sequel, there, it's it's the door is open that there could plenty be plenty of room of for yeah. yeah. So, anyways, now we're in full confrontation with our girlfriend, Final but it's battle. not our girlfriend because she is trying to vomit all over L. L turns it's her good. head, so she gets just yeah. the vomit on her back. Yeah, and and on her. Now, keep in mind that L has been wearing. A like white, uh-huh. fuzzy coat. Yes, this entire movie that is now like so covered in liquid blood, gross. So good. So we get this big fight, slow mo punches, blah blah blah, and then finally, L picks up like a full stump just laying yeah. on the ground, and then just clobber Sarah across yeah. the face. Like there's like really? pieces of wood ledge yeah. lodged in her face. Um T- Sarah is like smashing Elle's face into a tree and she's trying to reason with Sarah to be like, you're not like this. Tell me more. You know, that whatever. Just trying to really appeal to the human side. But yeah. it's not there. But then Sarah grabs the serum and goes straight into Elle's chest and says your beating heart praise oh. oh so sweet and sarah starts puking blood like a fountain more like, more vomit yeah everything is vomit in this movie and then the monster the slime hat starts to loosen yeah. so the serum freezes. doing something yeah it's doing something to the, the slime hat wants no part of that juice at all and she's able to Pull the slime oh hat god. off her head. Oh god, this is the word like watching L like or watching Sarah like peel the slime hat off of her head. This is so gross. Because her Cause... like scalp is like liquefied. There's just oh, shit coming up yeah. from it. Blech. And do not like L just crushes the shit out of slime hat yeah. on the ground with a tree Good. stump. Sure. There's a brief moment in this really disgusting scene of peeling the slime hat off that you can see that, like, for a brief moment, Sarah is back. It's Sarah yeah. looking at L. So we did get a final moment together, but I think as we've learned that when you, when the slime hat leaves you, you're dead. You are a husk. Yeah. Also, like her injuries are pretty bad, and I know like international space, interdimensional space juice uh-huh. cure all. But maybe not everything. Yeah, everything but that. And uh, it's too late. Sarah's dead. And we see Elle make it out to the main road. And she just starts walking with a severe limp. With a severe limp. Down the road as synth music plays and the camera zooms out. Credit. The end. The end. Cecil, shall we rate this film? Sure, why not? How approachable is this movie if you're horror film averse? On a scale of one to ten, one being the least approachable, ten being very approachable for the horror averse. I'd give Pussy Cake like 
three tall glasses of ice cold milk out of ten. The number one thing that makes this movie hard to watch if you're not into horror is just how overtly disgusting it is. It's just so much gloop and glop, and just 90% of that is milky white vomit. And so the gooiness of this film makes it really, really tough. I would say that it's not super scary. I don't even think like the tense moments are that tense. I think it's more about the gore. So yeah. if you have found yourself able to watch pretty gory zombie movies before, I think you, this movie would be just fine for you. Um, like if you're more afraid of creepy faces in the dark and jump scares and shit like that. Um, Very little of that. A yeah. super mean spirit. This doesn't, I mean, it's a horror movie, so there's a meanness to it, but it's not a mean film. This isn't like Terrifier 2, right? Yeah. This is not that at all. So, uh, yeah, I would say, you know, content warning for dealing with uh, an abusive father mm -hmm. um, or stepfather. But, uh, yeah, I would say three out of ten for approachability. What about you, Cecil? As a horror movie, to speak nothing of approachability, how would you rate this? As a horror film, this is a pretty fun one. I mean, mm -hmm. this is definitely like a movie that knows its roots. It's a very 28 Days Later, Evil Dead. Like, it's got that classic thing. It is definitely Josie and the Pussycakes in that it's like, we're going to take this fun, you know, five, some five quintet of, mm -hmm. of you know, characters and put them in space zombie apocalypse. I, I think, I think the, the, I was really in love with the movie in the first half. And then I think once we get into the actual zombie survival mode, I kind of fell out of it, like uh -huh. fell out of love a little bit just because of just, some of the survival part of it kind of fell apart. Yeah. But it does have amazing practical effects. Um, it's really fun. Like this is this is like a really fun ride of a B horror film. Yes. So for that reason, I don't know, I would say three out of five um international interdimensional space juice injections. Okay, perfect. Let's figure out what movie we will watch next. You have a scare die. I have a style die. We'll roll those dice up and see what movie matches those two things. Cecil, on your scare die, if you roll a one, our scare is magic with a K. Two, haunted. Three, a psycho killer. Four, Mother Earth is the scare. Five, a conspiracy. Or six, aliens. What is our scare? That's a two. Haunted. Okay, so I'm going to roll the style die, match our haunted to one of these styles. Let me pause for um, Siren. There's a crime or fire in progress that is going to be snuffed out quickly, I'm sure. Okay, I'm going to roll the style die to match up with whatever, uh, to, to match up with your scare of haunted. On the style die, if I roll a one, our next movie is a Euro scare. It's, it has to be a European horror film. Two LGBTQ plus, three wild card whatever haunted movie we want. Four, WTF, just a bonkers fucking movie. Uh, five, 1960s. Six, an urban horror film. What do we got here? I've also got a two. We've got LGBTQ+. Wow, we've, I think that's three weeks in a row we rolled a double. Really? Yeah, I think so. I think we did uh, doubles last week, and I think maybe the week before. Okay. So you and I have written down a few things that match up haunted with sure. LGBTQ+. Now, the LGBTQ+, plus is needs to have, like this movie, LGBTQ characters yeah. in it. Not just a movie a that campy appeals. campy sensibility. Yeah, yes. it can't just be appealing to gay, queer, etc. Um, it needs to be about. We're LGBTQ going for content plus. or creator. Yeah. Yes. So uh, we wrote down a few. We also have a Letterboxd account, Random Horror 9 on Letterboxd. Uh, if you join us over there, we keep lists of every single possible matchup of the die roll. So uh, you can contribute through the comment section uh, for other movies that we may be missing. So let's go through the ones that we have on our list here. Okay, one that we've covered before is Rift. That's an Icelandic film we covered I yep. think, a year and a half ago with Brie Williams. Uh, or based on Bree's recommendation. 
Uh, we also have The Haunting from 1963. This is based on the Shirley Jackson novel, The Haunting of Hill House. Yeah. Uh, I have not seen this film myself, but I do understand it's pretty clear, even if they don't say, I am a lesbian, there's a lesbian character in this movie. There's they they pretty much say it. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, another one we have on our list is Nightmare on Elm Street Two. This is yeah. uh that yeah, pretty straightforward. Yeah. Yeah, this is very gay. But mm-hmm. also, is it gay? It is very gay. Yes. But they were also trying to like very complicated history of this movie and its relationship to its queerness. Yeah. And then finally on our list, we put Picture of Dorian Gray, another movie. This one I have is not much seen. more subtle. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if, I don't know, maybe Haunted, maybe it's more cursed. Yeah. Haunted, maybe not really haunted. I don't know. I'm I'm on the fence about Picture of, I love Picture of Dorian Gray. It's a great film. Yes. Um, it's also very, this version in particular is very, the, the queerness is, it's a deep read, you know, okay. it's pretty, pretty under there yeah of course well let's look at letterboxd and see what people have suggested to us we have a lot on here actually yeah we do uh quite a few uh you want to start with uh with a few of these cecil see what people see say uh den dweller recommends hypochondriac from 2022 uh young potter's life devolves into chaos as he loses function of his body while being haunted by the physical manifestation of his childhood trauma relationship between the main character and his boyfriend is very important um and addison henneman is a queer filmmaker great so kind of interesting hyman 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 h-e-i-m-a yeah what yeah, yeah. okay sense. great uh bucky the cryptid recommends hell house llc origins mm. the carmichael manor i've not seen this i have uh-huh. seen hell house llc sequel spinoff to hell house llc a cold case investigator her girlfriend and her brother investigate the unsolved murders of the carmichael house and things start getting spooky fast i've heard this oh, is a very no. good movie i've heard this the yeah, the, yeah. it does a good it does a good origin story for mm-hmm. hell house weaponized toaster recommends fear street 1994 of course yeah yeah um, and also Elena from 2015, a Swedish film about a misfit teen's life that quickly descends into hell when she starts a new boarding school and is targeted constantly by bullies. The girls in the lacro- lacrosse team harass her every day, but she is protected by a friend who's as loyal as she is mysterious. Is she a ghost? Maybe. Who doesn't need a ghost friend protecting oh. them from homophobic bullies that's really nice i like that uh ganymede's cup recommends the blood splattered bride from 1972 a spanish horror movie um based on the 1872 vampire novel novella carmilla okay so we've got kind of a vampire thing newlywed susan is haunted by visions of Merkela karnstein a centuries-old bride who murdered her husband on their wedding night vampiric lesbians okay so many vampiric lesbian movies of the 1970s uh i love this one this is a good recommendation spunky blah recommends ghostbusters 2016 featuring kate mckinnon (laughs) yep haunted are there lesbian lesbians lesbian actor i guess lesbian actor yeah lesbian creator okay all right all right uh eric riley the Candyman remake Okay. Twenty-one, based on the Clyde Barker, you know, gay writer, uh, includes a gay couple who know better than to play the game. This is very true. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's true. The gay couples, they're like, uh, uh-uh. I was like, I'm not fucking around <laughs> with this Candyman bullshit. No. Nope. Atheros recommends Nerdy Prudes Must Die, the okay. third installment of Star Kids Hatchetfield trilogy. Follows a group of teens haunted by a vengeful spirit of a bully who dies in a prank gone wrong. One of the teens, openly bisexual. Okay. Uh, Vault and Spider also recommends Fear Street. Very gay, suburban town, haunted by a witch's curse. Mm -hmm. Lots of fun scares, great characters, and lore. Creepy Hosta recommends The Haunting of Bly Manor 2020. A TV show, so this would be a three episode. Uh, Beautiful story, gay romance. uh, The main character and another character central to the plot. Albeit 
a later part of the plot. <laughs> Fifth Hammer recommends Gothic. This is an interesting one. Um, I I really like this movie, Gothic. Um, Lord Byron, Percy Shelley, uh, Mary Wollstonecraft, uh, and her half sister and their doctor friends spend the night sharing ghost stories. Very British psychedelic Gothic. Pan lots of sex and death gay gay queer i remember if there's like an explicit gay relationship here. <laughs> i mean it's it's every it's kind of you get the feeling like everybody's bisexual in this movie. right right yeah 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 so it's, it's up there it, it, yeah let's see horror lectures horror lectures recommends Jamie Marks is Dead from 2014, based on the book One for Sorrow by Christopher Bazark and adapted and directed by Carter Smith. Uh, the plot follows a high school student who is haunted by the ghost of a deceased classmate who is found dead under mysterious circumstances. Okay. Um, ooh, Bazark received a Stonewall honor from the American Library Association. Um, oh, this sounds like a really fun book to read. Uh, it was recently selected for inclusion on the Human Rights Campaign's list of books for libraries in LGBTQ welcoming schools. Cool. So, I'm sorry, the uh, type on Letterbox is just so tiny. It is Christopher Barzak, if anyone is looking that up. Barzak? Barzak. Barzak. What did I say? I don't even know. Bazark. But I like Bazark, Bazark better. Bazark. Bazark is... <laughs> Barzak. Yes. Uh, Lila recommends Spiral 2019. Um, let's see, by Curtis David Harder. Uh, it's his first queer film, possibly a queer director. They're kind of like, I don't know, we couldn't find a lot about this, but <laughs> it is about a same sex couple and their daughter who moved to a rural town with some suspicious neighbors. Ryder Malik is haunted by his past in more ways than just psychological. Meanwhile, his family is put in danger when the neighbors begin hosting strange rituals in the middle of the night and their home is vandalized seemingly out of homophobic aggression mm. uh they would say the scare is definitely more culty than haunting um but there's a uh subtle but effective haunting element and okay a great what the fuck ending oz conway recommends the quiet room when michael attempts suicide and doesn't leave a note he inadvertently awakens hattie a demon that haunts the psychiatric hospital he's in Okay. Now he must find a way to stop her rampage before she kills everyone he connects with. So it's sort of gay ghost versus demon? Sure. I guess? Sure. Okay. Sure. Jacob Chipman recommends, uh, the uh, let's see, Velvet Buzzsaw. Haunted artwork is a pretty original concept by gay themes are strong throughout. Um, they contributed to character development, though not always in a flattering way. Sounds interesting. Mm. Haunted artwork. Suspicious Beans recommends Out of Left... Oh, no, no. It's not called Out of Left Field. Out of <laughs> Left Field, but the movie is called Penda's Fen. Penda's Fen from 1974. A strange little folk horror fever dream. Here's the description. Through a series of real and imagined encounters with angels, demons, and England's pagan past, a pastor's son begins to question his religion and politics and comes to term with his sexuality. Okay. Ooh. Sounds interesting. It does sound interesting. Monstrum uh, recommends The Haunting of Hill House, The Fall of the House of Usher, both of LGBTQ plus mains. Uh, My Cat Loves Horror recommends i saw the tv glow which okay. i still haven't seen so i can't i can't say uh uh wrong lanka also recommends i saw the tv glow uh description a young boy befriends a young girl based on a shared love of an obscure tv show as time passes their perception of reality skews in dangerous ways trans writer lesbian characters trans characters deals heavily with themes of feeling alienated and like you aren't who you are mm-hmm uh, Seer of Dafuk also okay. recommends Nerdy Prudes Must Die. Sure. And finally, Sav recommends St. Maud, uh, about a devout nurse with a hidden past caring for a lesbian dancer at the end of her life. And Daniel isn't real. College freshman Luke experiences a traumatic event and brings back his imaginary friend Daniel to cope. Very easy to make a queer read on that. Okay um interesting we've got a lot that are skirting 
mm-hmm. the two, mm-hmm. one one or both of yeah. the of the topics because like I saw the TV glow really really I think is such a great uh, really matches style so well as they point out okay. like you have a a non-binary director you've got yeah. gay characters you are yeah. dealing with uh, it is so perfectly LGBTQ plus this movie. Is it haunted? It's it's a bit of a read, like haunted by memory, haunted yeah, by uh-huh. yourself. Uh-huh. Like it's, I don't know if the spirit of us putting haunted on there is more possession or a, 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 yeah. a something is in the house and you can't quite yeah. see it. Um, something like Hell House LLC Origins, maybe more just gay characters. Yeah. Um, but nails the haunting really really well definitely ghosts there's mm-hmm. definitely a haunting yeah and there's characters that are gay which hey i'm into that yeah what's standing out to you like what what really uh really went into your ears and what what vomited all over your own what face vomited that, all over the marinate your excitement over, yeah mm-hmm. um i mean i love the recommendation of gothic Mm-hmm. It's a great movie. I think it's like a Ken Russell joint, if I remember. So it's going to be batshit bananas crazy. But it's also going to be a little like, everybody's a little bit bisexual in that movie, if I remember, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, and is it haunted? It's, it's spooky. But I feel like what's standing out, honestly, it's the haunting. Like, this is a movie, this is like a classic horror movie from the 60s that includes an actual lesbian character Uh at a time when that was, you know, like, not so, you know, popular. Yeah. Like, The Haunting is really it. It's also a good movie. Yes, yes. Like, it is a solidly made, good, spooky, haunting movie that sets up quite a bit of where we are now and the sort of why we think you know like shirley jackson was such a master at like the concept of being haunted and also an actual haunting yeah i would say um candy man the new candy man remake is a is a good second place though Uh uh-huh because there are gay characters in it maybe not the main characters but they are there and it's definitely about a haunting yeah, I agree. I, I think I'm fully on board with you. I, I think my second place might be Hell House LLC Origins. Um, but also the one that I think intrigued me, Weaponized Toaster had given us Elena, that Swedish movie. Like yeah. the idea of uh, like like, queer gay teen uh, befriending protective ghost sort protective of thing. Protective ghost, yeah. Like yeah. haunted by a good ghost. Um, Is her friend a ghost? Maybe. Maybe, as as uh, weaponized toaster says, I um, but yeah, I think that I think the goal here is to do the haunting. Like we get so. these rare opportunities to hit the horror movie staples. Yeah, and this is and one like of our them. last and our last two movies have been very like made in the last two to three years. Yes, so I think it's a good time to go back and do the homework. Yep, you know we've we've been watching a lot of things explode and vomit and sploosh and splatter maybe subtle subtle acting scripting Uh uh-huh you know just just some of those just some of those good old-fashioned values that we like to promote here on random or not uh you're saying we should class up the joint and you think that 1963's the haunting will not have any face vomiting who knows do you think it will have a clown that plays with people's guts maybe yeah i think i don't know uh, I bet it does, uh, but just a little bit in a really like a tact- tactful yeah. way. Okay, let's do The Haunting from 1963. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to finally get to watch this movie. Love that novel so much. So thank you all for listening. Thank you, Cecil, for talking with me. And if you have thoughts on Pussy Cake or ideas for other movies that would have been good, Haunted meets LGBTQ+, plus, let us know on Instagram at Random Horror 9 or on our Patreon, where we have a public discussion thread for each and every episode, and you don't have to be a paying member to participate. So watch The Haunting 1963 with us this week, and come on back next Tuesday for a new episode. Have a restful night with no one up chucking on you at the beach or nothing. Boo. Boo.